Courtney, you can hear us. You got the microphone working. The sound speakers are set to high. Are you coming in through clear? <laughs> yeah, I can hear some of you. Uh, not everybody. Good. So if I talk over someone, I, I apologize. I'm not doing it on purpose. So what do you got for us tonight? Lay it on us. Me? Sure. I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know. I'm just here to listen. All right. Fair enough. Well, tonight, like every Thursday night, we're ending, at a, ending in 20 minutes at 11 because uh, – I'm going jogging with my wife. Here's a good. Here's a good question. This is an interesting kind of. Wait, convert- wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Did you just say you're going to go jogging? Yeah, I'm a runner. I you run go jogging at like 11 o'clock at night. Probably I only run at nighttime. I only run at nighttime. When it's nice, cold breeze, that's like the perfect time. Yeah, right? that's like 95 degrees here in Miami. Okay. Can, can a convert lose his halachic <laughs> status? That's what Chris wants to know. Not according to halacha, he can't. Now, colloquially, what's done nowadays. There was a rabbi named Shlomo Gorin. So Shlomo Gorin, if you guys are familiar with the guy who uh, is in front of the Kotel in that picture in 1967, blowing that little shofar, saying the Temple Mount is in our hands, that's Shlomo Gorin, right? So he became the chief rabbi of Israel. He did something that was never done before. And because he did it, I'm not sure. I think he was a chief rabbi when he did it. It entered the Israeli legal system. He was the first one to ever nullify a conversion. It's never happened before in Halakha. There's no way to do it, right? Now, the reason he did it was for reasons of mamzerut, which means that the only way to free someone from the status of being a mamzer in the scenario that he was faced was to nullify the conversion of the children's mother. So there were two kids. I hope I'm telling the story over correctly. There were two kids that were born to a woman who never got divorced properly. And she remarried without getting divorced properly, had two kids. And these two kids had the status of mamzerim. Now, that's, that's a very problematic status. So he nullified the mother's conversion and said these kids weren't Jewish to begin with. And he just converted the kids. So since this, well, that was a very, I mean, in a way it's very beautiful. So how could someone take this and run with it and make it nasty? So it's funny when he made this decision, everyone was blasting him, right? And so that Rabbi Shlomo Gorin was a religious Zionist. So those in the Haredi party back then, I believe this was in the sixties, basically saying what I'm just saying now, there's just no way to do this according to Allah. And I remember when I was living in Israel, there was Rabbi Druckmann, Chaim Druckmann. He was the head of the conversion authority. So pretty much because the, the Rabbanut didn't really like him anymore, they nullified every conversion performed by his Beit Din. Mind you, he worked for the Rabbanut since 1999. And that day, people were running to the Rabbanut, thousands of people trying to get reconverted. Because there's a saying that when elephants play, the grass suffers. Right? I mean, these guys, I remember when... There was a rabbi in Muncie. His name was Avraham Gross, right? I mean, yeah, that was his name. So he converted a lot of people. And in one failed swoop, they nullified other conversions he did just because they didn't like him anymore. Instead of thinking about all the people who converted. Now, first of all, according to Jewish law, it's hard to do a conversion incorrectly. Even if you messed up in the conversion, it, it's good uh, or it's good uh, after the fact. It's hard to botch up a conversion. Now, you got to be a real schmendrick. Is that what you're saying? Even if if two of the people in your base then were, were related or one was like, pusillated, like he's not allowed to, to be a witness, right? I mean, even the Shulchan Aruch says that if it's done at nighttime, if you do it with two people, it's still kosher b'diavet, right? After the fact, it's still acceptable. So nowadays, it's almost like a common practice at the state of Israel that will nullify conversions. Uh, according to Jewish law, there's no such instance. The Rambam writes that even if a Gentile, right after he converts, he goes back to worshiping idols, he has a status of like an Israelite apostate, an Israelite apostate who does the same thing. But there's no going back. There's another silly practice. Uh, I think they do in Muncie nowadays. I know for sure that Natura Karta does this when they convert people, but uh, the other Rebbeim have adopted this this stupid practice, and this is writing a clause in the star, in the uh, in the in the Tudat Giur, in the um, 
conversion document that if the person stops keeping Torah, that it nullifies their conversion, right? This is kind of stupid. I mean, first of all, Halakha doesn't require you to give a document. This is a you know, fairly new practice. Not to mention that it's a double standard. I mean, but the small fact that somebody could be born into the Jewish religion means ultimately that being Jewish doesn't really mean anything at all. It's what you do afterwards, clearly, right? You know, so like unless, unless they're going to find some way to nullify the religious status of people born from Jewish mothers, they shouldn't be trying with to nullify conversions in this new manner. Where are people getting the chutzpah? I mean, it's just terrible that we hear these stories like this. I mean, what? Because they're idiots. But the reason they're idiots is because they're hurting other people. But there's a story. This is such a sad story. There was this kid who converted. And they found out that on the Beit Din, there were two two brothers in the Beit Din. Now, in a Beit Din, you're not supposed to have relatives in a Beit Din. Fine. Okay. However, they failed to realize that the halakha is that especially for conversions, all you need is two people in a Beit Din and they had three. And one of those two happened to be related. They overlooked that halakha and this kid had died in a car accident. But when they found out that two of the members of the Beit Din were related, they interned his body out of the Jewish cemetery and put it in a non-Jewish cemetery. The halakha is clear with that two is kosher but the evid, right? They don't care because they don't, they create their own law. Right, to be more primitive and backwards in Judaism is to be more religious nowadays. Nobody mentions these stories. I mean, no one said. And of course, if you tell the average Jew, they're like, "Oh well, who are you to question these rabbis? They know what you're doing, and they, they, they don't. Like, no one bothers to just." How could someone look. say that? How could say? A, how could uh, someone say a rabbi knows better than halacha? The, the it's because the nobody sages, studies the halacha. Prophets. Nobody studies halacha. Or they'll say, well, this is what my rabbi teaches. You know, it's like... Isn't it you know, against halakha to desecrate a body? To unbury somebody? 